Suns, 1999. Hey! S10. So she, sorry about the dog. She's mad at the tamale guy and the dog across the street and her want to jump the tamale guy. You know, it's a thing. They, they, they talk and they see the tamale guy. Like, <laughs> see? And they're going to beat up the tamale guy. It's not going to happen. Hey! You guys are done. The fight's over. You lost. All right. 99 Chevy S10. As you guys all know, I'm a mini truck guy and I do love S10s. I also love LS swaps. So for my son, for his 16th birthday, we went out and bought him a four cylinder stick shift S10. And it was a pile of crap. I mean, it's even a bigger pile of crap now, but it was a junker. We drove all the way out to, if you guys want to look on the map, it's called uh, Lucerne Valley. It's like right off the 15 freeway and picked up a four cylinder that had a salvage title for I think it was right around 2K, which I still think was a lot of money at the time. Um, we'll litter some pictures right here of what it looked like when we picked it up. Uh, the seats were terrible, the interior was terrible. It smelled like a fat dude plumber that worked out of it for 15 or 20 years. Um, we bring it home and we tore it apart. We weren't essentially planning on doing the motor, we were just gonna do the cleanup of the interior, put some wheels on it. I wanted the lowered part. So as you can see in the first couple pictures, it was lowered and we lowered it on the same wheels that are on my truck, in fact, and it looked really good. Now, moving forward, my son didn't like the lowered part. So we raised it back up and you can tell that's the iteration of it's up back with the, uh, what are these wheels on? I don't know what these are called these newer style wheels he likes this style where it's lifted up a little bit and it's got poke where I'm more of like the lowered style with the wheels just tucked in so this is his idea of cool my idea was the other pictures and we'll show pictures of the before and the after because I have them um in the first three months of him owning, owning this truck lowered with it all nice new interior all that stuff he blew the four cylinder motor so at the, oh, that's the ring catching me. Uh, at that point, we were kind of stuck. I had a motor and I wasn't really interested in putting it in and I had a tranny and I really wasn't interested in putting it in. But at that point we had a dead truck and we needed to fix it. So we took one of the motors out of the backyard. It was a stock 5.3 that we put in. And for some reason, it just had shitty oil pressure. Uh, so, with that being said, I had a fully forged motor, 5.7, that's got forged pistons, forged crank, forged and polished heads, uh, bigger cam, valve springs, all that, which I really didn't want to put in, but I had that sitting there. And I was like, all right, kid, we worked this hard, we put that motor in, and it has shitty oil pressure. I feel terrible for you. Let's rip it out and put my brand new spare motor for the T bucket. So I've always had a spare motor for the T-bucket. I learned back in the day, if you're gonna have a car that's kind of quick, you better have a backup motor. So the backup motor for the T-bucket that was fully built is what's in this car right now. And that's a 5.7 fully built. Um, moving forward till today, we had it dynoed and it made 360 horsepower on the motor with that motor. And it, that motor technically was made for nitrous or boost. So 360 to the rear wheels is really good. That's a little over 400 at the crank. Um, he drove it and he did real well. And we blew the rear end, the stock rear end that we welded. So we put the 8.8 .8 in it that's in it now. So this is a Ford exploder 8.8 .8 exploder ford exploder 8.8 .8 in it and it's peggy sue right now it's not even posy it's just open and then i went and put the nitrous on it and had it retuned so when we put the nitrous on it we had it retuned it made 480 horsepower to the rear tires which is a little over 500 at the crank excuse me i'm gonna stop somebody mentioned the airplanes Thank you for mentioning the airplanes. I read you guys' comments too. We live in the flight path. So Long Beach Airport, you guys Google Long Beach Airport, Long Beach, California. If you do a one mile circle in the Long Beach Airport, that's right there. They literally fly all day long. I mean, that's the price you pay for living in California, 3.5 miles from the beach. It's kind of a rough one. We have the freeway, the train, we have paramedics, all the time that is like a normal occurrence and i'm sorry um 
let's go back to the truck. So we have the truck retuned. It's making 480 horsepower to the rear tires. And I'm excited. And my son and me are going to the track. Now, the first time I should backstep, we took it to the track. It ran 860 or 850 in the eighth mile. And that was the first time my son ever drag raced and the first time he ever took the truck out. Um, I took the truck out after it was tuned on nitrous and I ran at the Anna Street, our local, oh, I'm sorry, Anna Street in Mexico. <laughs> Anna Street in Mexico on the draggy. I ran an 820. So for some reason he was slipping up a little bit and the truck was a little faster. And then on the bottle, I went seven, 790 or 780 on the street on the bottle in this truck. So according to the draggy, the draggy. Um, my son has never actually driven this truck at the track on the bottle. My son has driven this truck on the street on the bottle and he donkey stomped uh, a dude that we know that runs a company that has a badass diesel that makes like, uh, I want to say makes five or 600 horsepower and over a thousand foot pounds of torque. You know, those diesel tards are like, about with all my cars fast. They're not fast. They're big pieces of shit. Anyways, the, the, the diesel tard wanted to race my son and he got his ass waxed. Well, the diesel tard uh, had like suspension system in his car and he's like, well, let's go race in the dirt by the 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 race the, uh, let's go race in the dirt next to the railroad tracks here in the city we don't have any like dirt but we have railroad tracks and next to it they have a service road and that service road is like you know dippy well needless to say my stupid ass son you know spawn of my own decided to take a truck on slicks on nitrous and re-race the race on the side of the railroad tracks well We'll send you the picture. You guys will see the next picture of what happens when you race a truck on slicks on the fucking railroad tracks. I got a call on Friday at the at the grocery store. I can remember this, dads. Pushing the grocery store the cart with my daughter, and it's Brody. He's like, Dad, the truck's stuck on the railroad tracks. How is the truck stuck on the railroad tracks? Oh, well, I was racing the fucking diesel tard. You know, they're like the GTR guys. They should go to bed together um and i my truck landed on the railroad tracks you gotta come get it off why the do i gotta get off you and diesel tard put it on you should fucking get it off well they tried to get it off by fucking rear-ending each other it was like two boys in the bathroom you know <laughs> you probably get it done but it's not getting it done he destroyed the bed bent the side and tweaked the frame so now today we had to replace uh both lower control arms both lower leaf packs, the Caltrax arm on this side. Well, the tailgate's gone, it's destroyed, it's in the backyard, the bed's still fucked up. And then we had it aligned so that he could drive it. Today, the frame is three quarters of an inch, that bad finger. I can't even show you with the fucked up finger. But if you could imagine the frame is straight like this down, the frame is tweaked like this. On this corner over here, it's up three quarters of an inch. And we need to take it to a frame shop and pull it back we just haven't been able to do that now on top of all of these things somebody said something about our hood strap pin when my son was driving it in the short go back and watch the short video that we posted uh, my son just put the hood pins in his car uh the four hood pins he project and he did this at school the reason why he did this is because it had beautiful hinges with beautiful shocks but he forgot to put the front pins in and he took off to go to school and it said whoosh, boom and took out the windshield and both bent both ends so instead of buying another 500 dollars hood uh he went and uh, put four hood pins in so most of the time i like to drive it without the hood anyways now because it just looks like whooped up on excuse my language but yeah that, let's i haven't even opened this hood to see how he did that so I did give him the parts to do it, I just haven't seen how he did it. Thank God it's a light hood. Because if it was heavy, I wouldn't be able to do that. How bad does it look? Well, again, it's not my car, so... That's horrible. So this is what happens when you send a kid to school to do the work. That welds are horrible. 
like they got like a battery welder, you know, like where they put on the battery, like <laughs> put a fucking one of those pictures of that. But in Pakistan, I think they do better welding than that. But you can get the idea. I told them, hey, you need to put this right here. And don't tighten that. I'm sure we're gonna lose that. And it goes through the hood. And now we have no more hinge and no more shock. We'll show pictures of that. So here it is. It is a nitrous plated uh, 5.7 liter making 400 wheel, 480 wheel horsepower. We're gonna go take a few guys for a drive. I really haven't seen it launch at Anna Street. We're gonna get some video and some pictures of it launching at Anna Street. Um, other than that, it is a really nice truck. It's got a GPS speedo. It's got air conditioning, power steering, uh, a badass stereo. It's what's called a blow through with a 12. Um, I'd like to do more stereo stuff with you guys, but we can't play the music because it's illegal on the thing. And you guys don't get representation of how loud it is. All you can see is a speaker working, so it sucks. Um, let's take it for a drive. All right, so as you guys all know, we love NRG, NRG seats, NRG harnesses, NRG wheel. Uh, my favorite is the Nitrous Express uh, full Maximizer 5 system. Thank you, Nitrous Express. We won't be squeezing it today, but um, you basically just arm it right here. And when he goes to full throttle, it allows it to do a progressive nitrous. And he has multiple different tunes, so he can have like a light tune, a harder tune, and an even straight up tune. Depends on what traction is available. Again, he hasn't been on the track to use this yet, so it'd be nice to see what it does. Um, this is on what's called HP tuners. Uh, yeah, there you go. It's weird. So this is on HP tuners, and I don't know how my tuner did this, but when you hit this switch right here, it turns this yellow, which is telling the computer to go to a nitrous condition. I don't know, I gotta mount this switch sometime soon, but I don't know how that works. <laughs> HP tuners, it's not Holly. Uh, turbo 350, 411 rear end. That's what the gears are, and Caltrax. So this is a real basic build. For all you guys that want to build something that's basic, it really is. If you guys want to build something for your 16 year old son, I suggest not to. We'll talk about that. Hey, you guys calling me and messaging me about buying things for their kids to drive. Right there. That's perfect. Buy one of these and do one of these. Let me talk about cars you should not buy your kids to fucking drive. Hey, Jordan, what's the number one car Brad says not to buy? E36 BMW. Okay, and we'll go E36, E46, E50. Fuck them all, dude. All those BMWs. None of you kids can afford to drive that garbage, dude. Like, it is junk. Like, just because the drift tards have it doesn't mean it's cool, all right? Now, the other thing is the 240s. I'll give it that has some Japanese fucking, like, to it. They're, they're, I'm going to give a little soft spot to them, but none of you guys can afford those either, so, but... They're a lot better than the e-tards. Uh, the other platform is these Lexus L... What are they? The L300? What did, what did K-Bob just get? Oh, GS400. Oh, my God. Or LS400. Yeah, do not buy your kids this. All right, parents? If you're buying your kids this, they're just going to do donuts in the streets. All right? You're buying your kid... The other one would be like a, a 300. The Chrysler 300. Yeah. Do not buy your kids these cars. These are the worst cars you're gonna buy your kids for their first car. Buy them like a Honda Accord, a Honda Civic. How many Honda Civics do you see in the in the street takeovers doing donuts? None. You may see them parked on the outside because they got people there, but they, they ain't doing that like that. All right. Anyways, sorry about that that tangent, but uh, somebody talked to me about cars or a few people have actually talked to me about hey i gotta go to my book my retard book right here figure out what i gotta talk to you guys about and drive oh s10 build oh i got comments about did we really cheat when we built in the build and battle post something for the build and battle here the white s10 you're absolutely damn right we cheated how do we cheat the number one way was an LS motor, I think if you look at the thing, it says I paid $1,500, whatever I said it paid for. You couldn't get a running LS motor with wire loom, uh, transmission, and all that for that price. It just, it just doesn't happen. So, um, fortunately, I might have had something extra laying around, and fortunately had a better friend that would just come over. 
right off. So, if you guys are asking if we're cheating, it's not about cheating. It's about how you use the rules to your advantage. That's not cheating. So, here goes say that motor I paid for might have been a motor I owned and we needed to buy it. So, there's a way around most mountains. It's not just over it. There's that way and that way. So, the question was, did we cheat on build a battle? Yeah, we cheated. Now, did we get cheated on build a battle? Absolutely, we got cheated. We whooped their ass in every single race. In fact, I could have beat that RX-7 in reverse with the S10. It was so much faster. But, on the show, it had like to do with the uh, the build quality, which obviously you can tell I go fast, I don't look nice. And then like who everybody liked and they won. Oh my God, you smell that? Yeah. If you guys had smell a vision right now, you'd be like, dude, your truck is f***ed up. It's not our truck, it's one it's of these trucks. Bigger, yeah. yeah, whoa, that's bad. Anyways, we won the race, they won the show. Um, and I didn't get to keep the truck. I wasn't fine with that. In fact, the truck got uh, auction. It was the only build and battle car that actually got auctioned and took and sold. So if you guys go look back in the series, one was supposed to keep it and the other one was supposed to be uh, sold or whatever. Mine was the only one that they actually sold and it went to Texas and I still actually talked to the guys in Texas. In fact, the last owner was an employee of Texas Speed. So you can put Texas Speed Motors in our little thing, but he's an employee of Texas Speed and he was actually racing the truck. So, S10, yes, we cheated. Uh, let's go, I gotta go to the page. What was the next one? Oh, Cadillac. I get a lot of questions about the Cadillac. And there's a long story to that that I was after Hoonigan, so I didn't explain. Um, Cadillac, I got, and here's something that actually Vin pointed out too. He said I was, uh, I gave out misinformation in a comment in one of our videos, and I did. Uh, the Cadillac build, I got given parts. I got given the rims and tires that are actually on my mini truck, those welds. I got given a turbo, pistons, rods, and what else was it? A front mount intercooler. Okay, and that was for the Cadillac ATS, the four cylinder turbo car. Now, I had gotten that car in a misfortune. When we got a divorce, which I've talked about, my ex left that car in my driveway. Like here, this is your car, your payment. When she was driving it, it was her car the whole time. So unfortunately, I had to take over that payment take over that car and as Vinny said a long time ago when I got in that car that thing was way too nice for me I should have never started messing with it I should have just left it alone so ZZ Performance uh, I reached out to and said is you have any parts for this they're like yeah we're gonna send you a kit uh, just do a video with it unfortunately and this is all Hootigan for you so like Hootigan we did a video and it got kicked to the floor like, I think there was one ATS video, but there was no up video of like when we did it stock and then when we did it built, and I felt bad. So when I was out of Hoonigan's and I'm taking care of this car, the tires on it, because Brad was being a jackass with the weld wheels on it, and we'll put some pictures of the uh, Cadillac with the weld wheels on it. Love you guys at Weld. Put their little thing in here. Um, I destroyed the tires. So I had to put the stock wheels and tires back on it. Now. During that whole part of when we built the Cadillac, uh, it went to a place and they actually put the piston rods and the newer turbo in and it was cheaply done. Let's just say it was cheaply built. And I don't really talk to those people or do anything business with those people, but every time I hear people doing business with somebody that's cheaply built, it's like, ah, they kind of fucked the Cadillac on me. I gave them the parts. I didn't actually have to pay for labor. They were going to do the actual install on the Cadillac for me because I was very uncomfortable with that. And the first install came back with a blown piston, blown intercooler pipe, uh, all sorts of bad parts. So I personally pulled the motor out, had to have the motor put back in, and did it again. And at that point, I put it all back to stock so that it would at 
least run and last. And within three weeks of it being parked out in front of my house, it got stolen. So, answer the Cadillac, somebody else had it, not me. <laughs> Everybody comment below if you guys want to see that. And here he goes, an inside pass. 